Dans les côtes. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UI Pass Forward 2024 here at the MGM. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside Dave Vellante, co-host and analyst. We've got two CUBE alum for this, for this section, the penultimate session, I should say. It is Flo Ye, she is the Director of Automation at Dentsu. Thank you so much for coming back on theCUBE, Flo. Such an honor to be back. Yes, and Imran Aziz, Senior Director of Product Management at UiPath. Thank you so much. So nice to be here. Yes. Okay, so let's start with you, Flo. Tell our viewers a little bit about Dentsu and what you're yeah. all about, what the, what, what the company does. Absolutely. So, so glad to be back second time already. Um, Dentsu is one of the largest advertising company in the world. We have around 71,000 people across 120 countries. So we deliver a lot of award-winning work, including for household names like Amex and Microsoft. We essentially, it's a people business. We have an initiative this year actually in uh, innovating to impact. So combining technology and creativity, we want to deliver client growth as well, as well as societal positive impact. So which is very convenient to what we talk about here and why we are at UiPath once again. Excellent. Excellent. So two years ago, we, we met you. What's happened in the last two years? What, what's, what's evolved? What hasn't happened in the past two <laughs> years with the crazy stuff, AI boom. Um, so one of the biggest thing, I think I remember two years ago when I came on stage, we were talking about the AOM 2.0. It's when right. we just delivered the automation operating model, um, which has been such success and laid the foundation at Dentsu. So what we've been doing, it's actually now delivering AI empower automation. So autopilot, it's one of the big program that we're working on. We're one of the earliest adopter of autopilot. We currently already have 160 plus users on autopilot. So we're really seeing how using AI can also just kind of turn the automation up a notch of like delivering the results. And we also saw the growth. Last year I was also on stage with Graham talking about our program and we have 1700 like active members in our automation community. But with the AI boom, we now actually have 7,000 plus members on the AI Connective, which is uh, where we want to merge the AI and the automation together because they should no longer be two things that silo. We want to see these solutions. And I think Autopilot is one of the very prime example of it. So Flo has already sung its praises and run, <laughs> but again, do you want to give our viewers a, uh, an overview of what is Autopilot for everyone? Yeah, uh, Autopilot is UiPath's first party conversational agent. It enables people to complete tasks ranging from authoring content, but also more importantly, taking actions across apps. Uh, you don't, you know, we uh, get customers asking us a lot, but now you don't need to use ChatGPT at work because Autopilot can complete those tasks and also integrate with automations to perform those automatically. Uh, we've also integrated Clipboard AI into Autopilot now, so digital paperwork processing, including semantic copying, pasting from one application to the other, Excel, web forms, enterprise systems, that's now a part of the Autopilot ecosystem. And uh, document understanding is now additionally a part of Autopilot. So uh, Flo will uh, mention a little bit more what we've been working together, but those scenarios that she worked through, which is annual performance reviews uh, and HR agent scenarios are possible now because of those capabilities. I'm behind on my 2023 <laughs> performance. Uh, oh, damn. I wonder, yeah. oh, I wonder if you got get too, too much cube. I wonder if you can help me with that. So tell us about how you have maybe thinking about implementing Autopilot for everyone and how it's affected the annual review process. For sure, so we're currently doing a POC with HR, um, our talent team, so really appreciate and grateful for their collaboration. So what we are seeing is we're trying to solve a problem that year in review, it's at every organization. Um, you can't escape it and it is a human centric process, but it's not all sexy. There are a lot of tedious work that goes into the year in review. One of the thing and the opportunities we saw it's with context grounding, we were able to upload a lot of documents to um, autopilot. So now our employees can just ask questions around, hey, when it's the deadline? When do I submit these um, review process? What are the things that I need to know? Because 
the truth is the documentation had been out there this whole time. It's just all over the place. It's always been hard to navigate. So using autopilot, we can now deliver this information to our employees who's going through the process in a way that's really effective and easy for them to find. And the second thing that we're also seeing is that um, we are a global, like I mentioned, global company in 120 different markets. So a lot of people, maybe you don't speak the same native language as your manager and that you're doing your performance review in different languages. So we use autopilot to also help streamline the communication. So to make sure that our, I can write down a bunch of long paragraphs and ask autopilot. And the, the, the key to this is that you still have to provide that authentic content. You don't want autopilot to just spill out a bunch of generic comments and generic performance. So you can actually write whatever is authentic to you, but have autopilot to generate it in a way that's constructive. So that we can hopefully, and we'll see this as a POC, we're really excited for it, um, seeing our manager easier to read these performance review, and then helping our employees to do the process a little faster with less pain for sure. So what's so fascinating to me is that you you started this conversation by saying this is a really human problem and we needed a human centric approach. And so we went to we went to AI yes. <laughs> to, to help yeah. solve the problem. Because as as you've said, there are communication barriers and also yeah. your performance at work is it feels personal, even though it's right. just business, but it, it it does feel personal that you are being judged at work at a time. And this does require so much empathy and compassion and emotional and intelligence. How are you, how does Autopilot have all of these things that it can deliver this message in a sensitive way, but that also gets the message across? Yeah, absolutely. So I think one, to start out, the users and the employees and the and managers, they have to actually provide authentic content, right? Um, and hopefully, I think that's something that we will talk about and in the future, if the systems are more integrated in our autopilots, more integrated in across all different systems that we have at Densu, then we'll also know a little bit more about you. So that can provide more context. So that's hopefully the next level and the next collaboration in the future that we want to see integrating. But even now, just in just having the employees to provide that authentic content, that's kind of helping Autopilot to prompt, make sure whatever Autopilot generated, it's actually tailored to what you try to deliver. And then I think that's another other aspect of, Imran and I have worked on it a lot, it's just like the prompt, I think everybody's an engineer now, everybody's a prompt engineer. <laughs> so in a way, how do you want your message to deliver? You can simply just tell Autopilot. I know that you were doing some travel planning and we were talking With about- my team, yeah. yeah. like, hey, what, are, what do they like to do? And by providing that context, Autopilot can also tailor that information. So what is your communication style? Yeah. Do you, and Autopilot allows you to, like there's a checkbox like, do you like to talk more formal? Is that the preferred communication style? Do you like to be more casual? Um, Autopilot can also help you send that message out. One thing I liked about your scenario also is you use Workday, which is right. UiPath also uses transferring information from Autopilot to Workday because we have that action capability, it was easy. So uh, Flo just clicked a button once it was in uh, Autopilot and just put it all in Workday. And then governance, as you can imagine, this is very sensitive. Your review is very personal, it's sensitive. So using that governance uh, infrastructure the UiPath has where all that knowledge resides with you and, and the HR system was super important. And I think that's a huge part of being, uh, you know, equivalent at work of what ChatGPT does for consumers. Yeah. Just, um, to my takeaway is you both standardized certain aspects of the review process, but you've personalized it for the manager and potentially even for the, for the employee yeah. because yeah. you got the capabilities to do that. I, I mean, I, I kind of like that. I, I need this. <laughs> the hardest part about performance reviews is, is they, do, they are tedious, but when you, have a, when you have one that's difficult, like a difficult employee, it, it goes too long, right? Because they just want to, like, talk, and I mean, it's fine. But, but after two hours, you're like, okay, uh, done. We have to end this performance review. Whereas you can structure them now in a way, but still have the empathy for the employee, yeah. but really focus on that standardized process for all employees so you have a comparable way to measure. 
employees. I was going to add one more thing, which is career ladder. So we've introduced career ladders at UI Pathway. It's it. not about performance review as much as growing the employee. So having autopilot help you give guidance as a coach, saying, hey, here, there's things you can, you're really strong at, there's things you want to improve and to grow to the next level or whatever your aspirations are, that's baked into the process as well. The best so, performance uh, review I ever had was on a, um, an envelope. The CEO, Axel Lebois, came in. I was young. I was in my 20s. He promoted me. They promoted me, uh, you know, big job at IDC. And he said, here's your role. Here's your objectives. This is your, what I perceive as your strength. Here's the things you got to work on. And here's your growth path. And I'll, I can do these things for you, but don't expect too much from me. You know, if you, if you need some help, let me know. Boom. And he wrote it on the, literally, he talked about, wrote it on the back of an envelope. Here you go. Yeah. And, and, and it was like 15 minutes. <laughs> Got the message across. I understood what I had to do. And maybe and, uh, with autopilot, he could have used 20 minutes to do that. <laughs> the, yes. The time improvement. Right, but applying that maybe yeah. across the organization. Yeah. And no. the consistency that that, that brings. Yes. Well, you know, and, the, and the, you know, the, how you feel about your employee and your review process. Because, you know, oftentimes when you get a review, you feel like it's fair. That all the considerations were met and so forth. And that's part of what autopilot also helps take care of. You know? Well, I want to I want to actually ask about that because it does seem as though it has the potential to reduce bias. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because as you said, it is it is it's seeing a bigger picture of the the employee, um, the workforce as a whole, I should say. Have you have you found that? I think something very interesting and really inspired me is yesterday I was at a neurodiversity panel and they were talking about this, um, what they have, Densu previously have done work with Autonomy Works, which um, employ people on the spectrum. So one of the things that I was so fascinated, someone raised in the, in the audience was like, hey, when you are dealing with a neurodiverse um, population. Sometimes people are not really great at advocating themselves mm -hmm. and also just different culture, right? Like depending on the Western and Eastern culture, it's hard to be like, hey, I did all these amazing things even though yeah. you did, right? So I think prompting autopilot and having that kind of like a friend and a, an assistant in a way to help you get these performance together and just like, hey, I've drafted the first draft, but no, I want to add some additional points and I want to advocate myself in this area. I think that's really helpful to put that review because I don't expect them to be like one and done. It's more so like having that conversation. And I think autopilot helps with chatting and you can put your constructive performance review together by just adding more and more points. I think it's very helpful to do self-assessments also, and you could have autopilot direct folks through that, because a lot of times I'll go, wow, I, I didn't know you did that. That's, yeah. that was, thank you for <laughs> sharing you. Actually, that's where she's starting, yeah. self-assessment. Yeah. 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 And now I know the deadlines very well. I didn't used to be really good with them. <laughs> well, it's it's funny, because I, I cover future work, and one of the things we always say, a truism is HR is not your friend, but it sounds as though this is your HR friend who is saying, hey, let, write about that, per, that uh, report that you did that was so well received or right about that presentation yeah. you delivered. So Why um, do you say that HR is not your friend? <laughs> because they work on behalf of the company. They work on behalf of the company. They are, they are, their interest is that, not yours as an employee. Oh, okay. You mean like legally, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> you, you write about that. I do, sure, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so where do we go from here? This was a POC, and you, as you said, you're working, um, collaborating with HR, and that's clearly they're on board with it too, because they must hear just a litany of complaints from managers who have to do. Oh my God, it's performance review time. Yeah. Um, so, where where do you go from here? What are some other use cases that you that you're foreseeing? Yeah, for sure. I think there's many HR would pick this one because it's a pretty simple one. And I think it's actually really relatable to any organization. It doesn't matter they're in the advertising industry or not. But we're also seeing autopilot play, you know, pay, play a role in just helping your employees to take care of some of the tedious tasks day to day. Um, one of the biggest things that I would really like to grow the program is unlocking a new population of non-technical user to the UiPath platform. Because I think two years ago when I came on, most of the people who use UiPath are either some sort of automation builder or they knew about automation. So they went out there and they asked people to create automation solutions for them. So now with autopilot, we're seeing these non-technical user querying being the prompt engineering that, uh, engineer that they are. Um, 
gathering information from different, so one of the use case we saw was um, they put together product details from different sources. So they were in PDFs and they were in CSVs, so it was tedious to find all the product information. But just by uploading these um, documents to Autopilot, using the document understanding, the context grounding, they were able to produce this table within a few hours and with the reviews because you want that human in the loop, but that would have used to take them like one or two days to complete. So we're transforming the culture from consuming the technology um, to now creating the technology. So everyone can also be a part of creating automations and AI solutions. Fun. And Imran, working together with Dentsu, I mean, obviously they, this, this company is a case study of how to do this. What are some lessons that you've teased out that you then can also work with other clients in coming up with yeah, these kinds of solutions? First of all, let me acknowledge working with Flow has been tremendous, <laughs> oh. not only from the perspective of enabling the use cases, but you brought really hard requirements to Autopilot. So over the last six months, like, hey, governance, how much insights do I get from my users using it? So we've got a thousand people using it. Do I get patterns from Autopilot on how they're using it, how can I improve engagement, all the way to uh, what model are you using underneath, are you flexible, are you are you the Swiss Army knife of models? Like if you, if you have a better model for legal uh, document review, can you plug that in? Uh, if you're using Anthropic or OpenAI. So those were key because Autopilot is flexible. So we announced Anthropic as our default model, but we, we use OpenAI models as well. We use UiPath uh, understanding and specialized models too. So I think those those are refreshing. Obviously, bugs and yeah. <laughs> issues that you should yeah. know, found and our team found refreshing. And then the tools the agents use. Autopilot is an agent. It operates on tools. And now Jensen's already built a set of automation, so they were off to a good start. And with all those tools that Jensen's built, you can use with an Autopilot. But feedback from uh, Flow on, hey, I want more people to be able to create these tools, not just my development team. That was that was important as well. So Excellent. it's a ease of use. Yeah. Excellent. Imran Flo, this has been a really fascinating conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks guys for having yeah. us. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for one last session on theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.